Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Okay, I can't believe I'm saying this, but by the time you're watching this video, <laughs> I am moved into my new apartment, which like, I cannot believe. <laughs> We are moving across the city, so it's not super, super far away, but we are having to obviously load up our cars and probably the U-Haul with a bunch of plants. So whether you have to move your plants like across the country or just within the same city, there's definitely prep work to be done and I have barely started any of it. So I figured I could take you guys along and show you what I'm gonna do to prepare my plants for the big move. This video is probably gonna span a few days because if I tried to cram all of this into one day I would lose my mind. So today I really want to focus on pests. So the first step for plant prep is going to be treating all of the plants that I have that I think or know have pests because obviously when you're moving I'm going to be putting a lot of plants in one box they're going to be stressed out so they're going to be more susceptible to pests they're just going to be all cluttered on top of each other and if I have one plant with a pest they're all going to have pests sorry I shouldn't be doing that on camera ideally I would still like to move these plants completely separately from the rest of my collection probably also keep them completely isolated in the new home but I would like to treat them just in case because with moves <laughs> you can never predict what's gonna happen so I'm just taking a little bit of a precaution and I should probably be treating them anyway so let's just go ahead and treat these plants this spider plant might have spider mites. I'm not 100% sure. Treating this plant is gonna be a little bit difficult because of how big it is. This Maranta has had mealybugs a bunch and I keep treating it, but they keep coming back. So I'm gonna do more of an intense treatment today. These two plants have been near an alocasia poly with spider mites that has since died. This one I have caught some webbing on, which is a bummer that I have to treat it because it just put out this new leaf after not doing anything all winter. Her. This one is definitely more of a precaution. I haven't seen any webbing or any bugs, but just because it's in the vicinity of the other plant, I definitely want to treat them both. And lastly, okay, the lighting in here is so bad. I'm so sorry. It's my bathroom. I have this Hoya obovata that I have also caught mealybugs on, and I'm going to end this clip because it's so dark. <laughs> All right, grabbed the first two plants that I want to treat. I only took two because I don't want to cross contaminate any of the plants. I don't know who has confirmed pests, who doesn't, who has what. So I just don't want any of them to intermingle and make my situation worse. Luckily, it's only five plants. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. These two, I felt fine treating together because they sit right next to each other anyway. The first step that I'm gonna take to do this is to just empty the pot and get rid of as much soil as I possibly can. Okay, now I'm just gonna wash them off in the tub with lukewarm water. Look what I found! Garden mesh all over the roots! Okay, this is where we are currently. I gave a good rinse under the faucet to all of the plants and the pots because, you know, the bugs can live in there too. I was really thorough in removing all of the soil. I do that because the pests can also be living in the soil. By the way, if you ever want to root divide a alocasia poly, this is what it would look like. <laughs> 
Now I'm gonna go in with Bonide 8. This is what I like to use for treatment. I use Neem as more of a preventative and this for a treatment. I do recommend keeping it away from your pets and kids and all that stuff. This, you mix one fluid ounce to one gallon of water and I have my premix, hold on. I have it premixed in here and all I'm gonna do is just spray everything. I'm gonna get all the parts of it. I'm gonna spray the pots. I'm gonna spray the saucer. The instructions get a little bit vague for this kind of situation, so I just kind of let it hang out for maybe like 30 minutes. I don't know if you have a more scientific and proven method to do this, please let me know, but I just kind of keep it here for about 30 minutes just to dry out a little bit. Okay, so I have the plants and I'm just gonna pot them up. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much it for the pests. The one note that I wanted to mention to all of you is that I would try to do this a little bit earlier than I am. I am moving in about a week and that's like a lot of trauma for the plants. So I'm traumatizing them now and then I'm gonna traumatize them in a week. So if possible, try to do your pest treatment and prevention, of course, beforehand so that you're not like me and putting extra stress on your plants. But you know, things happen and I had to do it now. It is the next day. I absolutely needed a little break yesterday from everything. So today we are continuing on with our checklist. I called it steps before. I don't know why I'm doing that. This is very much a checklist. <laughs> I have a literal checklist on my phone. So we're just gonna continue on today. And the next thing that I wanna do is, um, oh, you can't even see. I want to secure all of the growing vines that I have because I have a decent amount of plants growing on moss poles or stakes or whatever. I want to make sure that they are fully secured to the pole because obviously that's going to prevent a lot of damage during the move. So I have some plants like this where they are growing on the pole, but they have a lot of vines that are kind of hanging down. Um, or they're half secured on the pole. I just really want to make sure that everybody is super secured up. I think that this background is so cute, but it doesn't light me very well. So I have this ribbon and if you saw me um, repot this with the pole, you realize I wanted the Velcro and instead I just got this regular ribbon, which is fine. I'm basically going to just cut off little pieces of it and by nodes, just tie it so it's a little bit more secure. And then you're done, that's pretty much it for this step. I have a few plants that I wanna do this to. Again, it's gonna be pretty redundant, so I just wanted to make note of the fact that if you have plants growing up poles, you should absolutely secure any new growth to the pole, even if they're growing into it. Hi, <laughs> funny angle, because I'm trying to get everything in the view. Next on the to-do is to repot any propagations. I have going on any of the trays just came in. So if you missed that video, I got a few traded plants come in the mail this past week. So they are currently in water, just acclimating to my home, but I really want to minimize the amount of plants I'm transferring in glass containers in water for obvious reasons. <laughs> it would make it um, a lot harder to transport these plants. So I think I'm actually going to be able to repot all of my plants except for one snake plant propagation, but I don't even know if I'm gonna keep it. I might just toss it. I know that's bad, but it hasn't even rooted yet and it's just one more thing I have to worry about. So I have a bunch of plants I need to repot. Oh, and if you're curious about 
the soil I am using. I have a whole video on it and linked in my description box are all of the products that I use for it. So if you are curious, I got you. <laughs> Okay, everybody is all repotted and looking so cute. I'm so happy with how everything came out. As per usual, I'll show you some of my favorites. I really love how this new snake plant propagation fits in really nicely with the other props. And now it just looks bigger. <laughs> I also really love how my Begonia Maculata came out. She looks so much fuller and happier than before. This Palea looks so, so adorable. I'm in love with it. I also really loved this cactus. This recovered from root rot pretty well. So I, I think that it's gonna pull through. It looks, it looks decent to me. This begonia is absolutely adorable. And then this is so cute. I love when I have like one vine in a tiny pot. I don't know what it is, but I just think it's so cute. I mean, they all look really great to be honest with you. And I just <laughs> highlighted most of them. I did put in a layer of worm castings on top of most of them because I noticed as I got towards the bottom of my soil bucket there really wasn't a lot of additives so i wanted to make sure they have nutrients especially because of this big shock coming their way soon most of these i would probably let acclimate a little while longer before repotting into soil but it is what it is it's gonna water them and i would consider this to be off my to-do list next on the to-do which i already started and then realized that i need to film it I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> but now I am going to be washing all of my empty pot. Oh, I cut my finger, so this is my precaution. Now I am basically cleaning out everything plant related. All of my dead plants, I, well, all. There were two dead plants that I tossed. I have a few empty pots, my propagation glasses, my plant folio all of this stuff, my spray bottles. I just want to clean it all and put it away because that's going to take a minute to do, <laughs> as we all know, and I hate doing it, as we all know. Today's actually being very productive. Right, Jonah? Not for me. <laughs> the last step for my preparation is going to be watering all of the plants that need it. So today is Sunday and I will be moving on Thursday. So I'm going ahead and watering any plants that need it today. And today will be my hopefully final water. Of course, if there is an emergency water, I'll go ahead and water that plant. The reason I'm doing it a bit early is because I do want to move the plants on the dry side. I've watched multiple videos on people moving with plants and it seems that the drier soil obviously makes the pot a bit lighter and therefore easier to move. You don't have to worry about the boxes being damaged with wet pots. I don't want to make them extremely dry though because moving will be stressful. It is summertime, so it's gonna be hot out. So I do wanna make sure that they are not like fully neglected between now and Thursday. It's like Sunday night. So by the time we move them Thursday morning, it's only really three full days. I think that's gonna be a sufficient amount of time. Yeah, that's kind of it for watering your plants. I do recommend doing it a few days in advance and not moving super wet plants. All right, and that's gonna be it for my preparing plants for a move checklist. Please stay tuned for Friday's video. It will be my official moving vlog and I will show exactly how I move my plants. So obviously this was more preparation, um, but there are still plenty of planty moving stuff for me to conquer. <laughs> Some of which I still don't know how I'm going to do. If you are not subscribed already, please subscribe so you don't miss that video. Yeah, I will see you on moving day. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye.